Hello, one and all, to the IHSCA League of Legends season, week number two. My name is Andy Mendez, and joining me, as always, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, I bet you I could am. do it much better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> Levi Nyberger, coach for Unit 5. Um, yeah, here we are. League, League of Legends kind of store. League of Legends. Here for uh, Naperville North High School versus... The Fenwick High School, I believe, if I am not yes, totally Yes, Fenwick correct. High School. Uh, and the ban phase is well into into effect. Um, doing a little bit of research into these teams, I, I make these these bans make sense. Uh, Ron Bot, the jungler for Fenwick, only plays Zach. Um, looking at only his past, okay. well, there's a few other games, but it is it is predominantly uh, a Zach player. I'm talking 22 games on that champion and less Whoa. than six on every single other in the last 40 games. So uh, the player loves playing Zach, and that is taken off the table, along with the target bans towards Frodo the Legend being the highest ranked player on Fenwick's side. Sharpening my feathers. <sighs> Standard bans, target bans, nothing too unexpected. The Kale looking like the first pick, hmm. and I wonder if these players are planning on Oh. Switching things up for the sake of being able to switch around, hover the kale, lock the pike. Uh, one would hope that it goes to the support because Genva, their support, does play a good amount of good amount of pike. Good amount uh, of pike. I good. wouldn't. Yep. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that pike is a spectacular first pick because now uh, the answer to that is well, <laughs> you can give an answer to pike. Caitlin and the Belveth being locked in. Ramus is still up. Hmm. Yeah. Um, this is a Ramus angle if I've ever seen one so this is, far. This is the Ramus angle if I've ever seen one. Looking at Nebeth's champion's pools. He hasn't played Ramus. Luckily, you don't need a brain to play Ramus. Um, <laughs> that being said, Nebeth does play Viego, Kane, Hecarim, uh, and a little bit of Belveth. But it looks like they're Viego just trying to lock down their bot lane before anything else. The Ash coming in. Ash Pike. Uh, an interesting lane. One you can't really get away from if you make the mistake of walking well, up very a sticky. Far. Yep, yep. Uh, um, ideally, though, Caitlyn probably doesn't step up on this lane. Um, Caitlyn should never step up, and with, with we'll the see. proper support, um, you know, there there's really shouldn't be any kill pressure at all. A Thrash would be perfect um, for that kind of a lane. Let's see what the last pick of the first rotation is for Naperville. Echo. Echo. Oh, Vi. Vi. Okay. It's the jungler. It's Nebeth's jungler. Um, I will say that Vi... Does not really work too hot into the Belveth. Um, early, yes, it works quite well, but as soon as you hit 15 minutes, suddenly the Belveth is doing a lot more damage than you. I personally am just not a huge fan of the Vi to begin with. Um, that Swain, I'm willing to bet, is going to go support. Uh, Foyo off, off. I'm not going to try and pronounce that one. Foy, uh, the support for Fenwick, is a Swain player. Uh, he plays Swain and Yumi, and that's it on support. Really? Um, okay. Well, there's there's a game of Blitzcrank, but that was uh, about a month ago. So, um, Swain and Yumi, that Swain is definitely going to go into the bot lane, which is concerning. They left their mid lane uh, open for Luminous Fish. Luminous Fish plays three champions. Yeah, it's easy to uh, uh, lock down that champ pool when you have uh, such a low amount of champions right, played. Maybe... But Ideally, on the side of Fenwick, I honestly would have liked to see the Yumi here. Yumi is just so absolutely strong currently in the current meta. To leave it open for both teams, and knowing now that even Fenwick's support does play it, would have been fantastic pairing with Belveth as well. Belveth and Caitlyn, just for the sake of avoiding yeah. Pike and Ash. There's the Yone ban forcing Luminous Fish onto either Silas or Yasuo, uh, or maybe Orianna. This, this player doesn't have a huge champ pool, but it looks like they're willing to sacrifice that. They're, they're cycling through all the mid laners, but there's only three of them that they can play. Mm -hmm. uh, to choose anything else would be irresponsible. I'd be very surprised if this was locked in. Is that I'm just as surprised with that? Because yeah. looking at this player's uh, uh, games, uh, in two months, they've played a grand total of one game of Zed. Hmm. Uh, you know, works pretty well into Zed. Definitely Syndra. Definitely Syndra. I a lot of blind picks happening this game. The the Pike is surprising. The Vi is interesting. The the Zed blind pick, a Scion, 
in the top lane for Dunapes. Um, We're just picking uh, top lane in round five, huh? Seems, seems so. This does look to be Dunapes most comfortable top laner. Um, the man doesn't play a whole lot of top lane. And the Gnar response, a lot of blind picks this draft, yeah. which I'm not sure how I, uh, how I feel about. Well, you know, just kind of knee-jerk reaction. Um, I'm liking both comps um, in, in their own little unique ways. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think that if I had to favor one over the other, though, I, I'm, I'm kind of liking the look of Naperville North's draft a bit more. I'm like just, Naperville North's draft a lot as well. Yeah, just on principle of you've got some some mixed amounts of damage. You're not relying heavily on a, you know the AD assassin. Um, you know you, you've got a, a nice control scaling mage mid lane. Um, you know Ash, of course, is just a solid a long range engage. And if uh, we can you know kind of capitalize on that, they're going to be lacking a little bit of that burst damage that Pike ideally wants. Um, but I think that overall, Neighborville North, just based off of draft alone, should have a pretty good time in this game. Yes. Uh, I'm looking at uh, Fenwick's team and seeing just about only attack damage, the only source of magic damage being that Swain uh, in the bot lane. And that being said, Caitlyn Swain is a very, very oppressive lane, so I wouldn't be surprised if they got an early lead. Um, but at the same time, when it, when it comes to team fights, there really isn't a way for you to keep yourself from being locked down by a Vi, Syndra, Ash, Pike. It's going to be, uh, dis despite my own predispositions against Vi as a competitive pick, um, she does do her job very, very well. That job being, I'm going to get onto the Caitlyn. Right, she has that single target lockdown. Um I think that it would be a mistake to alt almost anybody else in this uh I, I think it's okay against the Zed. Depending on again, I, I believe the first for the for the first fourteen minutes, Fenwick has to really take off, or else they're right. just going to be overwhelmed. And despite the fact that Belveth <laughs> scales infinitely, it's pretty hard for the Belveth to get on top of um, a team that has a Vi, a Syndra, and Nash. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Can Zed dodge the Vi alt with his alt? I believe nope. that there's uh, a ooh. interaction there where if the, yes. if the target is lost and untargetable, she just kind of. Lose yes, steam. that is that and it is does something go on that can cooldown. happen. Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking, you know, just based off of that merit alone, Caitlyn and maybe Mininar are going to be the targets here for Vi, essentially. And I and I would I would agree with that assessment. It's going to be an interesting game, uh, a very competitive game, for that matter. Both of these team comps are very scrappy. Both of these team comps want to be fighting, and so I expect there to be fighting. Um, Fenwick has the opportunity to make sure that Zed um, takes off. And, and the, the biggest issue that, that Fenwick's going to find is that Scion, the longer the game goes, the harder that Scion's going to get to, going to gonna be to kill. Cause I'll tell you right now, he's not buying a single magic resist item. I'm expecting that build path to look awfully like a, uh, a frost fire gauntlet into a thorn mail, into a Randuin's omen, into a frozen heart. Um, the the extent of how much damage isn't going to be taken by the scion the longer the game goes uh, might just be insurmountable. That being said, Caitlyn is known for for cutting through tanks, uh, as is Belveth. But I, I suppose we'll have to wait and see. For approximately nineteen seconds. The odds of there being an early invade actually end up being quite high, at least from the sake or the side of Naperville. Uh, I agree. Reason, I agree. The reason being, they've got a Pike, they've got an Ash, uh, they have the Vi, the Vi Alexa start Q, that that Vault Breaker ability. Um, I also see on the match history of of our friend Dunapes on the Scion. Is that he has a bit of a a, a a a tendency to build lethality on the Scion? Really? Uh, one or two games of it. 
So, I mean, very clearly this player can play both and every play style with this champion, but um, we'll see how that pans out. One thing that I will mention, in terms of these players' ranks, and of course rank doesn't always matter in these competitive games when you're able to work with a team, uh, Fenwick's top lane is the highest ranked player in this game by a, a pretty, pretty good long shot. This allows for... Well, the, the only issue with that being is that this this spectacular player is on NAR, which can have that impact, but not that solo carry kind of impact that needs to be had. But the other end of the spectrum, not to throw players under the bus, but our lowest ranked player in this game happens to be Diet Orange Soda on the side of Naperville North. Yeah. It looks like we're having a little bit of an issue with the spectator here. Uh, the spectate is not working. Uh oh. Looks like it is just a black screen. <laughs> Will not allow me to. Uh... One would hope that we can get into the game after leaving it. Yeah, we can try. So while we work on that, we will be right back uh, and uh, don't go away. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We're back much quicker than anticipated, but that is always a good sign. <laughs> Let me go ahead and make sure that this mini-map is small enough. <laughs> now, in, now, into this game, something that's interesting is Fenwick, or rather, Neighborville North elected not to leave their base until minions had left with it. Uh, I wonder wow. if this is a uh, method of invasion avoidance, uh, although... I mentioned earlier that the, the extent of the invasion uh, would have been coming from Naperville to begin with, so I, I question this uh, this choice. Oh, a little bit of a scrap in the bot lane. Looks like the Ash Pike lane is going to be paying off just a little bit in that early game. I believe Pike landed in early Q. That got um, that down. It looks like Flash was also burned onto Swain, and there's going to be another Q again. Is this going to be the hook that's going to get the first blood? And it is Jesus44 and Genva with the first blood for Naperville North. And that really is the the effect of not respecting the Ash Pike. Once the Pike pulls you in, you're going to have such a hard time getting away from that lane simply because Ash slows your movement speed by somewhere around 30 or 20%. Um, just for trying to leave. And in that very first play, that very first hook, uh, you might notice that, that Foy lost Flash. There was no Flash mm -hmm. to be had there. Uh, at that point, your your responsibility should have been, okay, I'm going to back up and no longer exist in this lane. Um, so we're now <coughs> seeing some pressure in the mid lane. Geneva making his best attempt to oh. pull Excellent. in. Excellent hook from Genva. Luminous Fish is going to burn the flash, and another flash going to be burned. Nabeth living with just a sliver of health a and surviving. A beautiful use. And oh, Neighborhood well, North picking up an additional kill up in the top lane. Didn't and, and for and for the praises that I sung for Frodo the Legend being the highest ranked player in the game, a solo kill onto the Scion with no offensive items in his inventory. Um, I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> if it was a bad trade or a tower shot or a mistake, um, but this is this is looking disastrous to the utmost degree for Fenwick. I wanted to mention in that earlier mid lane play that Nabeth did a perfect job of holding on to uh, the the vault breaker on Vi for the sake of gap closing, waiting for Luminous Fish to flash before landing it on him. This provided the perfect opportunity to land it immediately, not being able to really make use of that flash. Luminous Fish was taken down with it. A bit of a skirmish around the scuttle. They want to make sure this Belveth cannot yep. start oh. scaling. Genva did not land that hook, and unfortunately, Nebeth is going to be knocked up as well. Ronbot actually doing a great job of dodging the utility from Pike. 
And uh, I gonna go right down. Slippery, slippery Ray. Who gets uh, who gets the scuttlebug anyways? That is a, a good chunk of gold, a large chunk of experience, especially with Nebeth not having been on the map for that. From the legend, using his uh, his crunch, that jump for the sake of wave clear. I'm not sure what that's about, but Dunape really getting harassed here. Uh -oh. he, can just, he could die. Oh. And not yeah. respecting the 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 boomerang damage. Looking to get as much farm as he can before his his passive death. Uh, incarnate. Wow! What a combo from Luminous Fish as well, and Fenwick is suddenly back into the game. Fenwick is very much back into the game, only down by 400. Um, these poking opportunities really happening in bot lane already. Dash gonna be used, double dash gonna be used, actually onto Jesus 44, Roboto's gonna take no, a tower shot. No W from no. Ron Bot to try and follow that one up, but... Walking into the Z is usually not a very good idea. Oh, there's a full gonna be combo. The w, that to be found. Combo. You can't walk away from Ash like that. You're about to get punished to the utmost degree. There's no ignite on this, or there is ignite on the side of Geneva if they wanted to commit to that. But the numbers. Genva, advantage. Genva, Genva. <laughs> Genva, Genva. Genva. I'm saying Geneva. Oh lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent work. I think Luminous Fish had the right idea there. Didn't quite have the alt. Did have ignite though. Um, and then obviously the. Great follow-up uh, Q from Genva there. Donate making an effort oh, to make sure that there's this... going to be an engage down to the bot lane. Ignite, Ignite, both going to be used for both sides, and Jesus44 is going to pick up an additional kill. That's going to be number two for Jesus44. For this Ash, and the one thing that an Ash is really, really good at is pumping out damage from a distance. Um, that being said... Um, Ash really isn't good into any kind of assassin. Uh, Looking at Luminous Fish here with that extra, that extra kill and that one wave lead in the mid lane, uh, that is the threat to the Ash. And so the question becomes, how is Naperville North going to answer this, uh, this Luminous Fish in the mid lane? Agreed, and we shall see how this continues to move forward. Kind of across the board here, we do notice that Naperville North is maintaining a little bit of a gold lead. 1,000 oh. gold, or sorry, only uh, only 600 gold, 700 gold within the span of six minutes is is pretty substantial. That's about 100 gold lead a minute. Um, spotted on the sword, Luminous Fish in his roam, not doing a very good job of being that stealthy assassin that the champ wants to be. Both backing on a ward. At least now, Riverville North is more able to understand where the enemy team is and, and perhaps where Ronbot is as well. That red buff being up on the top side of the map. Uh, but looks as though... Oh, an engage. Alt going to be used for both sides. The Luminous Fish is going to pop the ultimate and the ignite. And that is going to be the end of Diet Orange Soda there. A second solo kill over to, over to Luminous Fish. It's only so many solo kills before that Zed suddenly turns into a teamfight champion. Um... No stopwatch on the side of Diet Orange Soda, whether it be from the runes or from the shop. Uh, it is a little bit of a no-brainer into a Mage versus Zed matchup that you take that commencing stopwatch from the runes. It gives you a free one uh, to prevent literally that from happening. And so, oh boy. an invade in the jungle. Ronbot trying to s scope out his red buff. This red buff has been up for a while, mind you. Spree. Oh, meanwhile, oh. bot lane. Another, that's Wayne. Uh, yeah, that's Wayne. Another kill for Ash. A flash being blown on the side of Foy. Uh, willing to bet a pike hook landed, and then that was that. <laughs> Again, <laughs> the pike, the pike Ash is a little oppressive if you're unable to avoid what's going on. A whiff hook which means the Caitlyn gets to live a little bit longer, but this Ash but is very, very, very strong. <laughs> Trying to get a plate for herself, but this Caitlyn's attack range makes it really difficult. Oh. The hook suck. through the tower, auto, volley, tap for hell. The Scion matchup looking a little difficult for Frodo the Legend. The thing about this matchup is that you are able to, to, to punish that Scion, but you can't play greedy, because the fun thing with Scion is that he does still do a very large amount of damage, and ulti coming through, just trading blows, saying hello to uh, each other. That being said... Vi is here. Oh, nice Q. Frodo is one shot. Now Beth is going to use the wall breaker to get back in. Used. 
Belveth does have her empowered form after taking the Rift Herald. The way that's going to work is she can now spawn minions in a lane that she feels like doing. The best thing that you can do in this kind of lane is just drop that Herald and take a full tower. The ulti coming through. That's a dead Syndra. Genma does not have alt, so this roam is maybe a little bit misbegotten, and now they might now, be able to just crack mid open here, get some have, plates on the Zed. Two dead towers. I'm not seeing... Yeah, we have two dead towers in that case. We have the Void Remora coming through. Every minion that dies near Belveth while she's in this form turns into a Void Remora. Uh, if she were understanding, if I would have sat under that tower just to make sure that more things are being done. Double trap, the ulti, not enough mana. Tragic. Yeah, you know, across the map here, Naperville North and Fenwick are making good calls, good decisions. You can tell by the gold lead that this, uh, or the, the gold differential, I should say, excuse me, that both of these teams are well matched. The early game went really in favor of Naperville North. Um, and, you know, in, in, an, in an ideal scenario, if you're in Naperville North, you're able to bring that lead uh, with you into the mid game. Yes, there is a nice lead here for... Fenwick, but I believe that most of that lead is coming straight from their mid jungle duo because the rest of these lanes are not doing too hot, at least in terms of kills. That Caitlyn hasn't died yet, still ahead on farm, actually 20 farm ahead, very sizable lead in that regard. Um, so the, the gold is only about 400 apart, which at this point in the game is a good amount, uh, but it's good to note that this Caitlyn is in no way out of the game. The Swain, however, uh, is, is looking a little pitiful. Uh, but level six on all these champions. Ash all going to be used and it's going to go wide. Bow, double knock up, and I, oh my goodness, so much going on. The shadows, everything going. Pike alt is going to be used, but not going to find a target. I'm going to have to flash out. Diet Orange so is going to do as much as she can. She's going to flash out as well. And Swain just using all of his healing. Caitlyn, ace in the hole, is going to be used onto Syndra. And that is a triple kill for this once slightly behind Caitlyn. And if there's anything that blows a game out of the water, it is three kills on a Caitlyn that's already ahead in farm. Uh, this game has suddenly got very, very, very difficult for Naperville North. Um, Nar is always going to have a team fight impact. That Swain, despite the fact that he's 0-3 and very far behind, still had an impact in that fight, causing chaos, causing crowd control, uh, really making the, the effort happen. This Caitlyn now very strong, although I will mention, not a fan of the build. It's looking like it's going to be a Duskblade Caitlyn. Hmm. Um, which works great for for initial autos and for and for landing cues or ultis uh, it is a funny little build for that but if, if you were to look at the other side like a neighborville north team comp i'm seeing a scion into yeah. a full ad in a full ad comp you're gonna need something to to cleave through that scion speaking of which though scion's gonna be taking a lot of damage here frodo's gonna take one tower shot but it should not matter as he's able to take dunapes down dan's gonna go into passive Frodo is going very low, and Beth is there to assist as well. He may be dead. And as we were talking about that bot lane as well, Ash actually was taken down under turret as well. This Caitlyn, granted, despite the lethality build not being great for the sake of macro, uh, it is very, very good at killing squishy champions, much like Ash. I kind of liked what Fenwick just did there. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, Ron bot. Oh, I don't have enough time to mention that. It's not Orange Soda is going to go down yet again to the Zed. Zed is on a rampage four and one. Absolutely disgusting Zed gameplay as we're seeing out of uh, Luminous Fish. As I was mentioning, though, uh, Ron bot did ping over for mid to rotate in order for this invade. Keeps invade safe. Uh, didn't lose any minions on that. It was perfectly, perfectly well timed. Mr. Vi is going to try to do something here, but as you're a couple levels down on the Zed, there's not going to be a whole lot you can do. The first tower of the game is going to go down mid lane. A couple levels and half an item. It's a, it's a rough fight to take, especially if you can't land the Q on such a slippery character. A flank coming in for Ronbot onto onto Jesus 44, and ulti comes through. I don't think Ronbot knows that oh, Mike is here. The flash from Ronbot is actually going to be really good, and he's not going to die. The, the pass is going to save up. him just briefly. 
Genva using his ultimate wasn't quite able to take it, but Nabeth is there to assist. But a one for one overall. And you saw that the the Omno Om Nom Noms uh, ulti there with the Eclipse on the Caitlyn, the extra serrated Dirk. That lethality is doing a lot of damage to the Ash. Um, there was there was an easy 400 500 damage from that. Again, this build does work very very well for killing these squishy characters. But if I'm looking at these characters, oh, there you go. There's no. one auto, two auto. Genva's dead. Yeah, that is not. Why is a little harder to kill? But if you step yep. on a trap, that's all it takes. This game, that Caitlyn, unfortunately, I I don't think it's even worth mentioning what's happening in the mid lane anymore because we've had it happen four times. <laughs> yeah. This uh, the Scion is the only respite that um, Naperville North is going to have from this Caitlyn. Uh, being able to stack that armor and really take no damage from the Caitlyn. Uh, but the Scion is not too far ahead. He's a little ahead, but nowhere near as ahead as this Caitlyn is currently. Yeah, I think if you're Naperville North at this point, all you can really do is look for picks and um, try these individual fights, like something like this, except with maybe all of your team teammates available. Um, Luminous Fish is going to pick up another another kill now onto the bot side. And um, Luminous Fish a red buff. Blood is going to be used. Actually, the WQ... And the Ignite is not going to be enough to take down Genva, but it is a good try nonetheless. The Red Bull Pink attacked by Luminous Fish. The thing is, Luminous Fish does not have Smite on that on that character, but he does have teammates. Nevis being looked does. at by, by oh, Floyd. No Looking to burst the Swain down and will okay. succeed in okay. doing so. Great flashes play. away. The Syndra, the Blast Cone, that is enough to dissuade Luminous Faith from, or Fish from doing anything further. But you know it's uh, harder to kill than a Caitlyn who's got lethality and a Swain. All that, but with a red buff. This yeah, Caitlyn I would think so. A force to be reckoned with. Yeah, Diet Orange Soda right now must be living their worst nightmare playing against that Zed. But looks like Ronbot's going to try to fight something onto Dun Apes. Road of the Legend is going to be taken down very low. Dun Apes is looking for any opportunity that he can. He does not have his ultimate. So he will go down, but Genva, Genva is passive. here. Genva's here. Genva has ulti. Genva has the oh, ability great. to actually oh, make this happen. Oh, no. Not looking I think, to risk that. Yeah, if you're Genva there, I mean, it's, it's tough. I believe Frodo Legend must have been at least less than less than 100 health off of the execute, but it's a, it's a risk that Close. you'd be willing to take. Yeah. Well, the question becomes, what can be done at this point in time to... To rectify the situation, we have a very fed Caitlyn, a very fed Zed. Everyone else on the team, despite the Swain being 0-3 at one point, now 2-4-4. Four, and four, Everyone on the side of Fenwick is doing very, very well. And there's not really a whole lot that can be done. Perhaps a steal. Looking. Fenwick doesn't see them. No vision. And it's gone. No steal to be found. Ronbot now with the empowered form still. The Herald currently alive for another 2 minutes and 43 seconds. That being said, being pinged immediately by the red side, knowing that their Belveth can make use of this, and with with a Herald at this point in the game and how strong the Belveth has become, a Herald will crack an inhibitor if used correctly. This is this is an opportunity that Fenwick is currently actively missing out on. Foy walking in a really bad spot. The flash gonna be Good used flash. for Swain. Flash ultimate as well. Genva with a great hook to force the flash and ulti. Genva with a, with a good hook to, to force that flash, but then a flash that was just about perfect. Any other kind of flash probably would have gotten uh, Foy killed there, but Luminous Fish, again, if you look at a Zed funny the wrong way and you're not actively playing Scion, you will not live. Um, I question yeah, you know, why Diet Orange Soda has yet to buy a stopwatch, to be entirely honest with you. you know, Fenwick is doing a good job of pushing their lead. They're going for the objectives. Sending their Zed down to Bob. They know that no one can 1v1 Zed on their team except for Scion. Scion's just going to be AFK pushing top side. And uh, overall, for Fenwick, it's looking pretty good for this game number one against Naperville North. Ronbot looking to get some some uh, some really, really strong stats now with the Void Remora available. The Lots Scion is the ulti, not years. a lot happening. Swain going to be taking down Pike as well. And now Naperville North is on the ropes. They can't not do much less. Going to have to jump around, get a double knockup on Ronbot. Oh, Zed's going to WWRQ. No Diet Orange Soda is had. just good as dead. Luminous Fish forced to burn the flash. And 
I believe the heal. I'm not quite sure where the heal came from, but. Yeah, it was from Jesus 44. Jesus 44 yeah, walking Jesus, up. They oh. can kill Luminous Fish, but unfortunately for you, that is not the case. And not quite what you're looking for if you're a Naperville North fan, unfortunately. Fenwick is going to be pushing down the middle lane here, and they do have the Herald up, I believe, on Belveth. So, really only a matter of time. If you're Fenwick, you're going to want to end this game uh, kind of the proper way. Do everything by the books. I would even just send all five topside. Baron's going to be up in roughly 20 seconds. So, using that, using your, your push and your objective to take down these topside, leave the Herald, and perhaps kite back to Baron would be the best bet for them. Yeah, um, well, if you're Naperville North... Yep, yeah, that's true. If you're Naperville North, however, I think uh, the, the best thing you could do is just, again... Try to find that numbers advantage. Try to find the 5v4s, 5v3s, and, and pray that you can get a good team fight that might be able to flip the game or, or, or in the favor of your team. So, this is exactly what you don't want, though, when you've got three people topside. Dunapes is going to be relatively unharmed so far, but there's a potential for, for a lot more to go wrong with Ronbot being here. And they're looking to go onto the Baron here, but maybe a little bit too early. See, if you're Naperville North, this is where you just want to kind of run at them and see if you can flip this fight here, but... Just yeah, Naperville North is... find the fight, but I'm, I'm seeing that Fenwick isn't really responding. Their Ash, their main damage source on this team, happens to be bot lane Genva. Genva not really doing a whole lot. Baron's yeah. gone. Yeah, Fenwick going to secure the Baron, and on Naperville North... This is a back. recipe for losing the entire game. Uh, if you look at what is happening with that Belveth right now, the passive exists. Those Void Remora available for the for the, the pushing power. The Baron exists because that's pushing in general, and Ronbot has a Herald sitting in his inventory. The so, yeah, Asher are going very wide. Yeah, this could be a push to end situation as Nar actually does go down onto the bot lane. That's exactly what you want to see if you're an April North fan. And now. The, the play of the game is just to heal as much as possible and try to find a follow-up fight if they go for the end. If not, then you're going to have to just let your inhib down and caught. let it happen. Yeah, Genva's going to get caught. They're going to be able to eat over the wall. They're the going for the end. They need, to, they need to be here. Scion needs to back. Genva Scion is here. Two. Take the Herald. Tower 1 and Tower it. 2 are both going to be done really low, and both are down. Genva's going to be taken down very low. The flash is not going to find them. Ronbot's going to flash and not find anybody. Boy, is, too much. Yeah, Boy is going to be healing a little bit at least. Luminous Fish is going to take down Scion, and now it is going to be Naperville North on the ropes again. Luminous Fish, one more auto, and it is going to take him down. The game froze so much so that it's so excited to see the rest of this game. Robot's going to take down another another TP from Fenwick. He's just going to secure the deal. 22 minutes, Fenwick taking down Naperville North High School in game one. You can't disrespect the Belveth with all three pushing abilities. There is no way to counter that if you're not far enough ahead. By the books, perfectly done for Pen for Fenwick. Early leads taken, early leads used, early leads end the game early. That is the end of game one. Game two coming right up. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Naperville North and Fenwick series. Game one went to Fenwick. Let's see where game number two is going to go. Uh, I am Andy Mendez, like I mentioned previously, and of course, joining me today is Coach Nyberger. Yep. Nyberger, how okay. are you liking the draft going so far? The Zach was banned, which means that Fenwick, again, is being pinched in their jungle pool. That being said, that didn't really stop them last time. The Galio blind pick, again, I, I'm not really a fan of these blind picks. Um, Zaya is a safe one. That being said, the Caitlyn being locked in immediately, um, just about Caitlyn and Draven being the two uh, champions that Omnom finds the most success on, and actually the only two champions that this player really plays. Um, granted, the Caitlyn looked great last game, despite uh, my hesitation with the build path. Um, this could look... Really, really good. I mean, it's a great first pick. The Belveth locked in again. They liked what it's doing. It's looking like a run back so far, yeah, at least. Yeah, it does look like it so far. I do like the adaptation to Zaya. I think if you're more comfortable on it, potentially, then it could be better for you. Into Caitlyn, it's not too bad either. Yeah, and into Caitlyn's actually quite good because you can use that ultimate to dodge the ultimate. Yep. But the thing with Zaya is that you want to get on top of your opponents, and getting on top of the Caitlyn is quite difficult. The Viego being locked into the jungle. This time they don't want the jungle pool pinched. So the Viego being locked in, which can have its uses. We'll have to see what the rest of the draft looks like for yeah, this to really have an effect. Belveth versus Viego is uh, it's like very much like an anime-esque battle, right? For, it's just like just however whoever can auto each other the quickest. And steal each other's maximum health the quickest. Oh. And the Bard hey. being locked oh, in this champion. Boy. Definitely being one of Genva's favorites. The Yumi. It's there. Oh, the Caitlyn no. Yumi. The Belveth Yumi. This champion, despite how annoying it is, it is very, very good. That being said, into Bard, it's a bit of a rougher case because the Bard can stun you to whoever you're attached to the moment you detach. Dread it. Run from it. Destiny still arrives. Yumi is here Yumi to has. terrorize the Illinois High School Esports Association League of Legends series. Yes, it has. The Darius Band now looking to pinch top lane, looking to take Dunape's uh, favorite champions off of the top lane. That being said, those two champions are Cyan and Darius. So if they're looking to do that, Fray of the Zed. After last game, that's not super surprising. It looks like they're daring Dunapes to take the Scion again. The Yone taken away from Luminous Fish. That leaves only the Yasuo and the Silas for this player to pick in terms of the champions that they have played before. Will they pick it here, or will they save it for the counter pick? The Silas picked up. So far, not some crazy ulties to take. The Bard ulti is pretty funny. But beyond that, not a whole lot to be done with that Silas beyond just comfort. And this definitely is one of Luminous Fish's comfort picks. Certainly. We'll see where we go with this. You can only envision... I mean, it could be, again, another Scion. could be the Scion oh, okay. and Ari. Ari mid. Diet yep. Orange Soda. And I'll tell you now that Diet Orange Soda does not play Ari. Well, I mean, it's at least a little bit safer than Syndra. Uh, theoretically, you know, you have your, your ultimate. You can kind of dash around and dash away. Singed is going to be hovered. Okay, Scion's going to be but picked. The Scion you locked know, in. Fun fact, the Naperville North Singed is uh, is certainly something that Naperville North has been known for in the past and actually <sighs> uh, was played during their state final series last year in which they won the state championship. Now, this is a completely different... Uh, sorry, two years ago, excuse me. This is a completely different roster from two years ago. <laughs> Actually, completely different. Um, but uh, the the Singe throwback would have been something kind of interesting. It certainly would have. Reason being, Singe is actually one of the biggest counters to Yumi, if you're not familiar. Yep, um, oh, right, in the, in the support role. Yep. In the, in, in the support role, and in general, the reason being the moment that Yumi's attached is if you throw the... Uh, the pool onto her, the, the grounding goop, um, she can't reattach for at least five seconds. And that right. really leaves that Yumi very, very vulnerable. One thing that I'll mention is Frodo the Legend is is onto Camille. 
Uh, this champion on a, on a player who can really hold their own is one of the probably one of the scariest things that can happen because that champion can solo carry. Um, Dunapes on the Scion had a pretty good time into the Nar. The Scion to Camille matchup is a very, very difficult one for that Scion. As soon as that Camille uh, moves ahead, suddenly the Scion no longer can exist in that lane and this Camille can really take over the entirety of the game. You know, what I find interesting though is that, you know, if this Zaya really does get ahead, Zaya can, has a lot of those, uh, a lot of those answers for those champions, right? If Camille's going to be E, uh, you know, EQ or ER uh, towards Zaya, you know, Zaya can always dodge some of that, at least with her ultimate. Um, you know, I think it's a lot safer of a draft this, this time around for Neighborable North. Uh, and obviously, you know, last draft, you and I had favored Neighborable North in that draft. Um, and they did get ahead in that early game. It just, again, it, it slipped away from them so quickly that Fenwick was able to capitalize on a lot of their mistakes and uh, end the game in 22 minutes. Yep, and we'll see if those same mistakes are being made against the Bel The Belveth is back. The main proponent for the reason that game was able to end at 22 minutes versus 28 was because of that Belveth and the sheer pushing power that they had. Perhaps this game... Uh, Naperville North will have a better idea of how to make sure that Belveth doesn't get the opportunity to get ahead and get those Rift Heralds. Um, with the Scion and the Ari and the Viego, uh, that does become a good amount easier in terms of the pressure onto the Belveth. It will come down to Dianor Soda's ability to land charms. Hmm. You know, it's a, it's a good point, but again, the Silas is just absolutely scary in the hands of someone who also knows how to play that. So Camille and Silas, a lot of that skill expression, um, you know, a lot of opportunities for Fenwick to use that skill expression this game. A lot game. of opportunities to use it, and believe it or not, all four of those champions on the side of Fenwick make great use of Yumi. That they do. That they do. Well, on, on that same vein as well, means that there are no tanks on the side of Fenwick, meaning if this game goes beyond 30 minutes and there really isn't a lead to be found for Fenwick, it's going to be exceptionally difficult to cut through that Scion and to cut through that Viego, depending on how that Viego decides to build. Um, no matter how strong that Caitlyn is, no matter how, how strong the Belveth of the Camille become, if you don't have a tank, if you don't have that front line, you will be blown up by an Ari and a Zaya and that Bard. Um, another interesting and competitive game ahead of us. I'm really hoping that Omnanam does not go lethality, Caitlyn, but looking at this player's match history, it seems that they only know how to play lethality, Caitlyn. And so um, you can expect that there's no real answer to the tank of the Scion unless this Belveth gets ahead enough to start doing that real true damage. You know, ideally, I think I would like to see Viego focus on the mid and bot matchups here uh, i think scion is so long as Scion can stay safe and you know farm up use that uh, furnace a uh, passive to uh, build up that health uh, late into the game i think uh, that'll be good diego does have an opportunity though to make a huge difference in this mid lane play um even if giving ari the kills is not the goal getting diego ahead is going to be just much better for Naperville North coming this time around. I would entirely agree. Again, about two and a half minutes until we're into this game. We can actually see it. The Bard pick is one that's very interesting that I like to see. One thing that can stop the Herald. A grand total of one thing. Literally one that can stop the Herald from crashing into the towers each and every time happens to be the Bard. And with the Belveth on the on the team for Fenwick, the focus upon getting the Rift Herald is going to be that much more uh, poignant. And so this bard pick may have been a response or a dare for the Belveth to come through and have that herald really have an effect. But well, that is a that is also a high skill expression uh, thing to do to make sure that that herald doesn't crash in the way that it wants to. We will see if Genva is able to make that happen. Minute 40 left on the clock before the game starts. Overall, let's just call it now. What is your favorite draft? Is it going to be Fenwick, Naperville? I'm really liking. I'm really liking Fenwick's draft. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Caitlyn, Silas, Belveth, and Camille are all super high, high agency champions that make use of this Yumi. And you know who can't give over kills? Yumi. 
it is, the, it is the perfect champion <laughs> to put on a Caitlyn where there is no substantial kill pressure, and unless the Caitlyn oversteps, which isn't really how Caitlyn is played, you're not going to get any kills on her. Uh, with a bar, yeah. at least yeah, we... with, the, with the with the pike. Oh yeah, you'll get you'll get kills on that. With the with a blitzcrank or a nautilus or a leona, it can happen. But with a bard, the reason that bard is picked in the support role is for the sake of causing or just disruptions. And there's no real disruption from the Caitlyn Yumi. Yeah, I think it's much stopped. much 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 easier to play safe as your you know Yumi being attached to Caitlyn versus Swain. We did see that Swain, of course. Did fall victim to a couple of those hooks early in the game, and uh, that is what caused Naperville's Ash to be kind of ready for that mid-game uh, scrap. I'm liking the agency that Fenwick has. I'm not seeing. I mean, the the extent of how Naperville North can make this work is by getting those picks and making those map rotations such that the Viego and the Ari can can work their magic with the crowd control and the damage that they can bring. But it is going to come down to the individual skill expression for most of these players done apes again on the scion looked pretty good a pretty a, a very large amount of comfort on that champion but scion isn't known for winning games by himself and so the teammates have to really come in clutch to make sure that everything is going to work i agree oh getting back into the match here Hopefully the spectator just works. I might note that the Caitlyn elected to choose lethal tempo in this matchup, uh, which bodes well for a for an attack speed crit build. But again, I don't think this player has ever played Caitlyn without lethality. Um, starting the we'll long see. sword could be a first. Uh, is, is indicative of that serrated <laughs> Dirk start. Right. Um, despite my, my disgust with it as a coach and somebody who's been playing this game for much longer than he should have been. Um, <laughs> I, I, it, it's been working, and if it's a comfort, then it's a comfort. And believe it or not, at this point, of, at this level of play, comfort is most important. Certainly agree there. I think all of these teams want the opportunity to prove themselves further continue playing throughout the season and hopefully make a bout for playoffs so you know april north is really going to have to step it up here in order to uh to live up to that hmm. plenty of missing things coming on to the both sides I believe there's players just having fun it's always good to see players in, in good spirits getting ready for this next uh this next bout so <laughs> Plenty of things. So Jungler is actually starting on either side of the rift this time around. Belva starting on her blue. And uh, Viego going to be starting on his blue as well. With the assistance of Scion leeching up in the top lane. They will know that Viego is going to be starting top side as Bot has shown already as well as Dunapes being late to lane. Which allows so, Nebeth, if he pleases, to go and invade that jungle. Nebeth's clear is not that fast compared to Viego's. The opportunity being present, whether or not he will take it, is up to him, looking like it's not going to happen. Uh, a lost opportunity, but not one that had to happen in the first place. Sure, yeah, not necessarily. I think, you know, Nebeth didn't necessarily have the information that... Um, that Fenwick was working with. I think, if anything, Fenwick would be uh, the ones to try to make an early push and then an early invade. It looks like the early push did happen. Luminous Fish is going to walk up and probably place his ward. And going to spot Nebeth at some point here. There it is. Oh, actually, a first blood down in the bot lane, and Yumi is going to be taken down somehow uh, by the hands of uh, Genva. Genva probably landing the cheeky stun onto the Yumi as soon as the level 2 ticked over. And that Yumi does not have a lot of base HP. Uh, and the range of exhaust is pretty small. I'm not super surprised that that happened. Um, just Hard did burn Genva, his ignite. Yep. Just because Genva has been very, very dominant on these playmaking supports uh, last game, and will continue to do so this game. But again, it's a team game, and so if that Caitlyn doesn't feed, believe it or not, that's probably going to be enough to allow uh, things to happen in Fenwick's favor. 
I agree. I agree. Looks like a potential for something to happen. A repeat of yeah. last time with Genva making the roam, the jungle's crowd control missing, the rest oh, hitting. Charm landed! The, the flash going to be used. Ignite. Electrocute is not going to be enough to find that kill. An absolutely incredible play, I think, from Naperville North there. Looks like, uh, like you were mentioning too, uh, the Genva seems to be on a really great roam timer and knows exactly how to play these uh, playmaking supports. It looks like the dive is going to be happening down at the top side. Photo is going to get out with his life. Relatively harmless dive, except for the side of Jacobville North. That orange sort of does not quite have the mana to be trading against Luminous Fish. Luminous Fish taking, though, a lot of caster minion aggro. A lot of aggro, but that being said, Luminous Fish elected to begin with the Corrupting Potions, whereas Diet Orange Soda started with the Doran's Ring 1 pot, meaning there's going to be an inherent mana advantage to Luminous Fish. Uh, especially because Luminous Fish probably isn't going to be spamming spells nearly to the degree that Diana and Soda is, but the flash being taken, the flash being predicted, but it doesn't end up resulting in a kill, regardless. Certainly good plays from Luminous Fish all around. Bollian's going to look for it back here. Reset. Uh, Jesus44 probably should push this wave out all the way. Especially since Caitlyn did back on a ward, so they know that she's gone. Uh, hopefully. Nope. Meanwhile, top lane, Frodo's going to be fighting Dunapes. Dunapes is going to be struggling a little bit against this Camille. Especially, whoa, that Q damage with the Sheen. Once, uh, Camille, once Camille, Camille has that Sheen... Yep. He'll spend 700 gold, and here comes the hook shot into the second Q. Timed out. Did you really think you could really Couldn't quite find it there. This is a teleport ignite, you, uh, Camille. Luminous Fish going for the trade, taking a lot of damage from the minions, but again, the Corrupting Potion allows him to do this a little bit more than other champions may have been able to with other builds. So Looks like they might be setting up for another dive in the top side. The Viego is up here this time. Ronbot is Ronbot gonna be stays waiting. Ronbot for long enough. You'll probably see it. Yeah, here's in the path. Is... Now the two junglers are going to be scrapping, but Frodo is going to be eating right through the turret and assisting as much as possible. The ultimate also going to be used and... Now, Dives is as good as dead, potentially, here. Yeah, they he, are he looking for the dive. Allow Frodo to hit first. Yeah, Frodo, no Electing. one. Oh, the flash! Oh, wow. Unfortunate the for this. Oh. kill for Frodo the Legend should he choose to take it, but no flash available. Not wanting that to happen. A misplay on the side of Ronbot taking aggro when he didn't intend to and dying for it. Dunape sitting out of this turret. Very much close to death. That ignite from the sake of Frodo the Legend is very, very close. Could bait it out with the shield. We'll see how it works. He just wants the XP. He wants the gold. And now he's looking to leave. But Frodo refuses to let him. The ignite comes in top lane. We'll see if it ends up resulting in something more than that. Still oh. alive. One auto off from death. Frodo could choose to take it, but again, he has to risk that. If he, <laughs> if he thinks he can get out from the tower. He's trying yeah, this to is quite this something. This is this is a, a nasty game of chicken that Frodo has no reason to force, is the thing. He's 10 CS up. He's a kill down. Oh, and Dunape is overstepped. Dunape is dead. Dunape yeah, does end up going down. Mid lane also. But Nabeth is now here to potentially find something that Ari is going to be used. Spirit Rush is going to be used to jump over the wall. You're two levels down on a Silas. It's not really something you ever want to be, especially when you're level 5. There's no burst damage to kill that. Again, this this top lane Camille pick is going to be what, what can actually take over the game versus last game's Gnar. 12 CS lead in the top lane. 11 CS lead in the jungle. 34 CS lead in the mid lane, and it's even bot. Fenwick is making it very, very clear who should have the inherent edge in this game, currently being 1.6k ahead. An ulti in the top lane for Dunape to make sure this pushes. Does he have Demolish? He does. This should be a plate for free. Should he choose to take it? Decimating Smash. 
onto the wave for the sake of clearing it out. Belveth coming in. Dunape has suddenly found himself in a very sticky situation. Can't walk back through the tower. Can't really walk through Belveth. No ulti to be had. This is a dead scion. Indeed, it seems like a dead scion. And... and the question becomes, who do you hand that kill to? Believe it or not, it's actually okay on both of those champions. Belveth Absolutely. Really, really scales well. The Camille scales just as well. Uh, a little greedy from the side of Dunape. Oh, Feather Falling going to be used up, down in the bot lane. The Ignite It's going to be used on the side of Yumi. Actually, Ignite Exhaust, both. The both Flash going to be used. used. Jesus trying to go for the Flash Root. Didn't quite get in position for it. Luminous Fish looking to make some plays with this ulti. And that's a dead Ari. Oh, an escape. Oh. Nebeth They're now not in a good spot. Oh, not Luminous enough. Fish. The Corrupting Potion ticking this whole time. Genva, maybe perhaps... An auto attack could be enough. Not electing to look for it. Oh. Oh, oh. not quite. Oh, what a charm. charm lands. That being said, there's no escape from the Hexic Ultimatum once you are in it. <laughs> Close. You might note that Ronbot is on the Herald. What did I talk about? Oh, the Herald. Ronbot again in this Belveth knowing exactly how his champion works. And looking to make it happen again. Dunape, why are you there? You got a this proxy. Grand total of one champion who can proxy well. You need to teleport out. Perhaps not. Oh, Showing yourself, knowing, that, knowing that he's going to die. This is a little disrespectful. But I think the fun thing is that Fenwick doesn't care. They don't need a minion wave. They have a Belveth. The minion wave is theirs to begin with. Dunnip looking to execute for the sake of keeping himself alive. They have a Herald. They have minions. Belveth makes her own minions, Dunnip. You're not getting anything out of this. The execute to deny the gold and to get the farm. But they have a full wave and a Herald with them. The Herald will die. This tower is very, very tanky after taking three plates off of it. There's no way this tower fully falls just from the amount of resistance that it gets. But... A lot of gold being taken. They recognize this. Go, okay, let's let's hit the wave. Let that reset. Get ourselves some more minions. Hmm. But they have their own wave coming in. Ronbot taking a tower shot. for the Legend taking another. With that next wave, this tower should fall. That was no a great play down. from Fenwick. Truly, great play from Fenwick. I like the adaptation there. They didn't go for the kill. They knew exactly what they wanted. Went and got the turret down, used Shelly, got the Belveth minions as well. It was, it was a great play overall. Dunape, Dunape had the right idea of trying to proxy it to keep the tower from dying, but for, neglected to remember that Belveth makes her own minions. Mm, the teleport going to be used. Hard ulti. Keeping himself safe from Nebeth. Orange Soda dying on the back of it, and in comes the top laner for support. Nebeth now running for his life. The Caitlyn ulti. Oh, the lethality really punching hard. Luminous Fish looking to try and make something happen. <laughs> oh my goodness. Again, the Corrupting Potion ticking, keeping him alive by the slimmest of margins. Yeah, that is going to be some great textbook League of Legends gameplay there from the side of Fenwick. I think if you're Naperville North right now, just trying to scale up this Scion and uh, doing what you can to stay within the game. But with an 0-3 jungle mid, 1-4 top side. Botland at least going slightly even. And that's another dead scion. Now, there's something to be said about the, the feeder scion playstyle. This is not how you do it, unfortunately. Uh, the intent of feeder scion, uh, even though it was nerfed recently, is to make sure you're having pressure in the lane that you're doing and drawing pressure away. That being said, uh, okay, the, the final chapter coming out. They're reading to the bushes. <laughs> Uh, Caitlyn, with that lethality, very scary. You have to be very careful in that lane to not step on those traps. I'm seeing, I'm sensing a repeat. Yeah, now Silas also has 10 stacks on his, uh, on his oh, ring. Really? I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty rough for Naperville North to come back from this one, at least without shutting down their mid laner. So high risk, high reward uh, play from Luminous Fish and, and build as well. That being said, uh, the, the risk is, is very, very well worth it. This player knows his skill level against his opponent uh, and, and considers it worth it to purchase such an item to have such dominance.
it's looking as though it's going to be a bit of a wash from the sake of Luminous Fish and Ronbot. And in front of the Legend again, this Caitlyn is sitting there. And you know what Caitlyn has to do for the first 20-ish minutes of the game? Just sit there, but what's sitting there doesn't look like is walking back. No oh, flashes to be wow. Blown. Okay. No flash blown, instead a ghost to get out of range. We are going to be used, and now an additional scrap down up there as well. So much going on. Even top lane, everywhere is scrapping. Viego might be in some trouble as well. Luminous Fish is going to try to find the kill onto Nebeth. All while Nebeth, uh, Dunafe is going to be taken down up in the top lane. Luminous Fish is going to be taken down in his own base. And Om Nom Nom is very low, but backing off on his turret down Dang, the bot lane. Fire. This bot lane, the only hope being being held out. The mid lane differential, the Diet Orange Soda, only with 51 CS to the 112 of Luminous Fish. The gold difference between these two players has to be about a full item. And there's no real way for Diet Orange Soda to get back into this game, especially just with the game state. There's no way to, to have pressure when your jungler is as far behind as you are. Not quite. You know, the CS is a little different. Objective bounties, you know, a silver lining to being behind. 250 gold split about the team. Uh, the Bard ulti stolen away. Perhaps Luminous Fish can make it happen. Not quite. Not quite. The stun will always come through in that Bard portal. Um, if the Bard knows what they're doing, that should always, always, always hit, because you can throw it while they're still in the portal and have it land. Um, for the Legend exemplifying full understanding of the champion, max range hookshot for the sake of being able to escape. Um, this is this is very much by the book. The only thing that Frodo the Legend isn't doing too well is that he's only got 83 CS. 22 below his lane opponent. And this could simply be because uh, Dunape has been um, doing what Feeder Scion wants to be doing. Creating that pressure and uh, relieving himself of his own gold value for the sake of taking minions and taking pressure. Um, making this Camille farm champions. Granted, um, let's see how much gold Frodo the Legend gets off of this kill because it's going it's going that way 220 20. that's worth approximately 10 minions so <laughs> um considering that for the legend has four of those this gold lead is still very much in the favor okay i like this play from jesus 44 luminous fish is gonna be flashing and using the ultimate as well one more auto is just gonna Ooh. be it but no the q is gonna pop and the one is gonna I go liked. down I could, I, I, I could appreciate that Luminous Fish uh, flashed in a way as if he was playing Zaya and could pull those feathers back. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a perfect flash for that sake, but unfortunately, uh, the only ability that Silas gets to take is the ultimate, not the rest of the kit. And so, no no pullback, super damage on that. The Q max and the 10 stacks on Mejai's seems to be enough. Scion barreling in. Whiff! We have Rombot coming down to help this fight was happening, but the jungle support of Naperville North coming in first. An odd choice to take the Viego ulti versus the Bard ulti to stall yourself out, but that's 950 gold over to the Viego. Here comes Belveth. Not enough. Not nearly enough. Ace in the hole blocked. If... I don't know if it was on cooldown or not, but if Luminous it Fish is, yeah. had Just taken it. Yeah. If Luminous Fish had taken the Bard ulti, that would have yeah. been uh would have been enough. Yeah, I did see the passive on Bard briefly there, so it was unfortunately on cooldown for Luminous Fish. And Beth might be in some trouble here. Photo of the Legend going to be using the hookshot. Going to be eating in. And Beth forced to flash. And the objective bounty was claimed topside. Tower Dragon being taken. being taken as well. It is not a terribly insurmountable gold lead. Around 3,000. Uh, almost 4,000 for, for the side of... Are we not going back for the Void Coral there, Ronbot? Apparently not. Hold on. Everfrost, full combo. That's a dead bird, if I've ever seen one. There is no escape here. 
Gale Force used, no flash available. Heal used, there's no ability to escape from the 7 and 1 Silas. That one death did bring down the ability power that this champion has at his disposal. There we go. Luminafish is going to be able to use the ultimate there to save himself briefly, but it won't be enough of killing spree for Nebeth. Now, Naperville North at least getting a little bit of gold back into their uh, into their pockets and back into the pockets of Viego. Silas purchasing, purchasing and finishing up the Cosmic Drive, a very strong item for that champion. That being said, the Mejai Soul Stealer now has zero stacks on the Silas that had 10 just two minutes ago. Uh oh. Naveth looking Von for Von. this Herald. Gonna be in a little bit apart. of trouble. The E damage reduction is gonna save him briefly, but not for quite long enough. Bard ultimate gonna be used and gonna shut down Caitlyn briefly. Front of the legend is gonna be trying as much as possible, but not gonna be strong enough to 1v3. Oh, the Caitlyn Q is gonna land on one, but not quite land on the Beth as he was possessing. Oh my goodness. And Naperville North is suddenly back into this game with Nebeth just absolutely going all out here on Viego. Unable to finish off in the bath. Uh, Fenwick going in one by one. The classic, yeah, I'll kill you. No, I'll kill you. Yeah, I'll kill you. Not really working out in their favor and allowing the to get himself back into this game. This vehicle looking considerably scary. Uh, a much higher degree of agency on that champion. Luminous Fish, again, walking towards the enemy team by himself without support. Uh, is not one something that bodes well for his health. Oh. Looking to get some kills, however, Dunape can't do anything to stop him. Builds are coming through. The oh. knockup. Okay. Oh, the flash, flash. going to be used on Scion. Yep. Not going to quite look what you, what you're looking for there. Dunapes is going to go down, and now they do have a numbers advantage if they wanted to find something else on the map here. Baron is up, but maybe not the solution that they want right now. Viego is backing with plenty of gold in this inventory. Oh. And it's awfully hard to do a Baron when uh, your Caitlyn isn't building attack speed. Yeah, very good point. Genva going to be finding the opportunity to land some passive autos, but that is going to force Luminous Fish to TP and protect his laner. And now Naperville North has a very real way of getting back into this game with only a 3k gold deficit. They do have the opportunity to find something. You can see that the red team uh, on the side of Fenwick is trying to find objectives or pinging now onto the bot side where there is a tower left open. Going to push that wave out and potentially get some damage onto this turret. Get some gold in the pockets. After slipping up earlier with the with their poor focus and objective control, they're looking to really reel it back, take a step back, take a deep breath, and come back at it and make sure they recognize, hey, this game is about objectives, not kills. Sai with the Phantom Dancer that's now a strong-ish bird again. Still 0-2. Still pretty even on farm, but, you know, the, the Zaya can't be anything that's scoffed at as long as the Silas is not actively on top of the Silas. Ooh, Fred of the Legend taking a lot of damage. Does not have the flash available because she did not bring it. Oh, the re-engage going to be fine onto Om Nom Nom as well. Now the flash E is going to be enough to save him potentially. Nebeth looking for the hook shot on the side of the uh, Viego, but wasn't quite able to find it. On the bot side of the map, Silas taking a tower to make sure something was answered for this kind of pressure. Uh, now recalling Happy, knowing that that gold has gone into the pockets of his teammates. Still holding onto their mesh eyes. Um, at this point in the game, I feel as though that item is a little inefficient. Oh, that is going to look to find something here. Caitlyn is just going to be absolutely blown up as quick as possible. Ronbot is going to pick up the Yumi train and going to find one kill. It's going to find the reset as comes. well. She should be just fine. Spamming R as much as possible. And going to take the portal necessarily. No, actually, Luminous Fish is going to find one. Genva going to be finding one as well. A and huge that. misstep for the side of Naperville North looking to dive to Caitlyn, which worked quite well, but teammates were able to come and follow up. That Yumi makes it so hard to I kill the I was about Beth. to say the same thing. Yumi absolutely saving that fight. Belveth living with just a couple of HP points. Able to kill someone and then revive and using that ultimate, or excuse me, using her ultimate and her passive rather uh, to uh, find that. And now Baron is going to be taken. That's going to be almost as good as done, potentially, for the side Baron of Fenwick. The a third dragon for the side of Fenwick, should they choose to take it.
after an earlier slip up it's looking a little bit rough a five and a half thousand gold lead for the side of Fenwick and now looking for soul point uh, an ocean soul do you know who makes really good use of ocean soul all of those champions okay Ronbot's gonna be engaged on Ronbot. however Canva. the bath There's looking no for something escape. as well they did find him okay so you're the one you know person who's going to be benefiting a lot is now dead but they're going to try to fight to the here as well all right order sort of force the flash use the spirit rush as well luminous fish is going to be carrying the yumi using the chapters but not finding it luminous fish also using the scion ultimate and i'm not sure why the camera is going over to diego luminous fish is not a killing spree and now trying to push this down with baron potentially all they need to do is lead the minions in not necessarily continue the fight this turret is as good as dead done apes is going to be hooked on by the Silas and going to be blocked as well. An additional hook follow-up is going to find that kill. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting back afraid of the Oh, game. what an excellent E and Q and W find. Oh, Luminous oh, Fish oh, is just is. finding so Back. many opportunities. Tower shot, the Yumi saving the oh. life. And Beth trying to ult away to kill Luminous Fish, but you cannot leave the Hexic ultimatum. And this might be the end of the game here. Uh, we got a bard alive. We have done a up soon. Genva, can he pull it out? Can he save it? There's a wave coming in for the side of Fenwick. Luminous Fish, scary on this champion. Throat of the Legend, equally scary. Not as scary of a score line, but that's just because he hasn't been anywhere but top lane until now. This might be another game ending push if they decide to take it, which they should. Oh, wow. Yumi not what quite dead. Excellent. excellent ultimate. Stolen from the bar. Ronbot is going to be ulted as well, but that is going to be the end of the game. Fenwick takes the series 2 0 over Naperville North High School. A solid performance from the side of Fenwick in both games. Despite my, uh, my hesitations for their draft in game one, they pulled it out. They exemplified that they are the ones who know this game better than their opponent. Take a look at the Silas damage here. Absolutely incredible play. Silas. 33k damage on the Silas. Exceptional amount. Well, that is going to be it from us at uh, the Illinois High School Esports Association. Congratulations to Fenwick. Winning 2-0 over Naperville North High School this week. Tune in next week, uh, just around the same time, for the other featured matchup of the League of Legends season. Uh, Coach Nagberger, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. Of course, you've got your team that's going to be prepared to be playing today. Who are you guys You're, playing today? Uh, we are playing against York High School. That being okay. said, uh, the scheduling has been a little bit whack from their end, and so we'll see if the match happens. But if it does, we're very much prepared. Very good. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for watching. And as Tivo always says, do your homework.